Hey, this is a video to showcase how I organize my data in Obsidian. I work a job which doesn't leave me much time to capture notes, so I have to be able to organize them in a way that I can capture and uh, be able to access them down the line quite fast. So I've built my own method of capturing, which is a little bit of lazy working, but it's organized in a way that I am able to find everything quite quickly. And I thought you might be interested to know about it. So for those of you who are new here, I'm Ben. I'm a senior software engineer working full time for a company. And in my spare time, I create videos about productivity tools. So I'm going to start from scratch by building it from the ground up. This is easier for you to follow and you shouldn't cause any trouble along the way. So Obsidian open, this is my main vault. We're not gonna follow this, we're not gonna touch this. By the way, if you want to get this interface and if you want to build it, I've created another video which completely explained from the scratch how to build this interface. And I'm gonna place the link at the end of the video. You can watch that one. Uh, but let's start from scratch from a newly created vault which is here my test vault just created it for test purpose and once i'm here we can quickly go into settings appearance and change the theme to minimal it's better to work with it's easier and maybe set the colors also to something brighter here nice so it's completely visible. From here, I'm gonna tell you the next few steps what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create the folders, the base folders, which are the base level of organization for me. I usually dump every file into a relevant category, but I don't go too far with it. For example, for me, uh, notes are personal, work-related, technical, business-related, and assets. So you can see that, like I have a very base level of organization that I dump my MD files into them quickly just to keep this side panel clean and also be able to have access to them later if I want to like, for example, migrate a piece of these data. Let's say I just want to migrate my technical data to a different application. It's easier, it's all in the same folder, especially with Obsidian that keeps a physical file, MD file, in those folders. And then I'm gonna show you how I use tags for it, uh, how I set up the interface with both folder and tags be visible to me and the relevant plugins. So with that said, let's start creating a few folders and then very important would be assets. So assets, every file, every attachment that I drop into the application, I'll configure it to automatically be moved to the asset folder. So we go to the settings and here under files and links, there is this default location for new attachments. It automatically sets to your vault folder, which sits on the main folder. So we, don't, we do not want that because we have a folder for it. Click on it in the specific folder and then you get to choose among the folders that you just created. Set asset for it. And then anytime you drop any attachment anywhere, let's say I'm in the business, I drop an attachment to the file under business, the attachment will automatically goes to the assets folder. Now let's try that. So I'm gonna drop this here and you can see that Seneca photo went under the assets folder. And then on the right hand side, I usually set this right hand side to my tags, which basically shows all my tags and sub tags here. So I have all the accesses that I need over here on the left and on the right. Left would be my folders, right hand side would be tags and sub tags. Now the good part of Obsidian is it creates the tags automatically for you. So for example, if I go here and let's say I create a personal tag, then it will be appearing here. And whenever I assign a sub tag to it, it will appear as a child and is collapsible and expandable. I can go down the line just like that 
and you can see that every child will appear underneath the parent. Now I want to tell you a bit more about tags, how I leverage them to get deeper organization and quickly capture data. I'm going to use my own wall to demonstrate. For example, I told you, remember, that uh, the folders are my front line and they are the main categories. Then comes the tags. The tags and subtags are their specialization. For example, a technical note can be anything related to my profession. So it can contain language, programming, frameworks, architecture, database, cloud platforms. And here I have cloud platforms. You can see that the technical is up here. Underneath the technical, I have a child named Azure. And under the Azure, I have the related topics. As I go deeper, my children become more specialized. The child of the tags, I mean, not my own children, of course, but the child of the tags will become more specialized. So for example, database, SQL Server, or any other database technology, then under the technologies, I have uh, specialized, for example, T-SQL, T -SQL, uh, the language, the optimization, Swift, EF Core, you can see that. So as for our vault, you can also follow the same. The main level of organization would be your folders. The specialization would be tags and subtags. So this way, it helps me capture really quickly now. So all I need to do is not to drag and drop or anything. I just type as I go. For example, here is a technical note. Again, technical about, let's say, frameworks. And then is about .NET, Microsoft.NET. And you can see that all of them are created. I don't need to create folders and subfolders and then drop the note inside the subfolders manually. Everything is done here. And if I, if I want to even relocate it, I can do so. So for example, framework, something else, like something else. It easily creates it for me and I do not need to do a lot of management here. Have you ever struggled to really understand the concept in math or science, not just memorize it, but actually feel confident solving problems on your own? That's the gap Brilliant helps to close. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform built around the idea that we learn best by doing. Their courses aren't just videos or lectures. They guide you through problems step by step, encouraging you to think critically and actively apply what you're learning. What I personally love about it is that it's accessible across my mobile devices, laptop, and desktop, and the way it has revolutionized boring, passive learning into interactive, fun, challenges that keep you truly engaged. Whether it's foundational math, data science, computer science, programming, or even topics like artificial intelligence and neural networks, Brilliant makes these ideas accessible through clear explanation and interactive problem solving. What I appreciate about Brilliant is how it breaks down complex topics into bite-sized challenges. Each concept builds on the previous one helping you move from confusion to real understanding. It's not about memorizing formulas. It's about building intuition through practice. You can start learning on Brilliant for free. Just try the 30 days trial, which unlocks everything Brilliant has to offer. They are also offering a 20% off on annual premium subscription. For the ones who sign up using my link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen. If you're curious to explore topics deeply and learn by doing, if you're looking to replace the games that are meaningless, I highly recommend giving Brilliant a try. Start now and get the most out of your time. Now let's get the relevant plugins that we need so far and I'll build it along the way. I'm not gonna get everything uh, immediately. So I'm just gonna uh, let you build the mindset as I go forward. Uh, what you need to do is go to your settings, community plugin, and as you can see, you should turn on the community plugin access and install. Then you're going to go browse and you need to search for file explorer plus plus this one. Once you install this one, you will have the ability to pin notes on top. This way, 
we are now able to build dashboards. For example, this node can be on top and it can be turned into a dashboard. What I use dashboards for? My dashboards are usually consist of things that I need to access immediately, things that are very important. I'll create a link and backlink to them. For example, here I have my dashboard and we do not need the image. So what I'm going to name this would be main dashboard and I assign a tag for it. And then I usually separate the header with this line separator. And what I need to do then create my links. For example, welcome here is one of my most important links. You can build your dashboard as you wish. So for example, you can add titles, nice titles to it. Uh, let's say important links. And then uh, you can start adding your important links here. And then again, separator, something else, separator, the important things you have. What I do with dashboards is I'll create a dashboard in every single folder that I have. I have a dashboard as a main dashboard for my vault, which can consist of folders and files. In my business folder, I have a dashboard. I will name it business dashboard. And I keep adding my important links to it. And this way I have a second layer of quick access to things that are important for me. This requires a little bit of work and maintenance down the line, but if something is important for you and you need to access it and you know you're going to miss it or you're going to forget about it, then it's good to have dashboards and spend some time on building them. By the way, there is another way of adding your header and also the important hashtags to your header and is this. Once you create a new note, let's say this is your title, you immediately after title, you press dash, 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 and it gives you metadata. And then in your metadata, you can have your tags in a different way, slightly more visual. And then you can select your tags instead of typing them. And then after this, you can again create a line separator and start your note. This is going to be your header and this is going to be your body of your note. For the tags, there is a community plugin that I would love to introduce to you and is Tag Wrangler, this one. Install, enable. What it does, it gives you additional operation on your tags. For example, rename a tag, create tag page. It's gonna be handy, new search for, and you can see that, what it does. Let's create a new page tag page, you can see that it creates a complete page for this tag. It doesn't have any use for my case. I don't leverage from it, but for the other commands, I use them a lot. And then another very important thing is journaling. How do I journal? I create a separate folder for journals and this will be my main journals of the world. You can have specialized journal, let's say personal journal. It will go as a subfolder under your personal or if you want to be it, make it quick it can be a sub tag of let's say your personal and also i'm going to introduce you to this plugin which is named calendar it comes very handy once you install and enable it you will be able to see this icon appeared here grab it and you can drop it down here and you have your calendar so what's the benefit of this? It shows you, first of all, it, create, it gives you a quick way to create your journals. Once you click on any day, it will create a journal for you and you can create the automation for yourself to be automatically moved to journal folder or you can do it manually. Drop it there, journal, and what it would be, journal daily, a line separator and you can see that any day that I create a journal it will be having this tiny icon here which is a dot underneath the day which indicates that that day has a journal created 
And finally, search. The search in Obsidian is good, but it's not the best. So that's why I use this community plugin called OmniSearch, which search your world completely for a lot of different things. You can go through the description here and see what it does and how it does it. But basically, I found it much, much, much better. And if you combine this OmniSearch with another plugin, which is called Commander, enable, and then go to the option. And then in the tab bar, you can add a command, OmniSearch, Vault Search. And if I save it, you can see that an icon appeared here. And if I click on it, it will open the Omni search for me and I can quickly search through everything. I love Omni search because it's way more sophisticated than the default search on Obsidian. And if you do this on the commander and sync everything, you can access Omni search exactly in the same place in your mobile devices. So that helps a lot searching through your notes in mobile devices using OmniSearch as well as your desktop. Another way of accessing my data is again through the tags, which is quite easy now because I have a search button here, which is completely dedicated for tags. For example, if I type dashboard, you can see that it just brings me all the dashboards in my parent tags. And if I click on them, it will open anything that is relevant to that tag. And finally, the last level of search for me, if I couldn't find it in any way by Omni search and tags, then it's going through the folder itself, search in the folder, and then type what I need in that folder. So that's it. I hope it was helpful because I try to keep the video short and direct to the point. This is the time that YouTube going to suggest you two of the videos that I handpick for you especially related to this video that you just watched. Watch them, and I hope those are also useful for you. See you in the next one, and until then, take care of yourself.